Israeli rabbis say current events in Israel could lead to war of Gog and Magog. Fact or fiction? As I was uh, traveling this, this week, uh, I knew when I heard about what was happening in Israel today and this flotilla that came in and supposedly uh, a, a peace mission, mission uh, in reality it was, a, uh, it was a diversion, of course, in order to disrupt Israeli uh, uh, governmental officials and so forth, and so they came in as a peace, in, a peace initiative and bringing in supplies and so forth. And, in reality, it was a it was a group of protesters who who actually uh, wanted to do great great harm uh, to uh, Jewish forces and so forth. And it's unfortunate that our media uh, has uh, completely uh, misdirected people's attention as to what really happened there. If you look at some of the film footage, mostly put out by Fox News, you will see uh, that uh, the Israeli soldiers were immediately attacked with with iron bars and so forth. One one soldier even thrown over the side. Uh, so on, on the one hand, what's happening there, uh, Israel is, is within its rights to protect uh, its borders and its people. And, but is what's typical of what uh, generally happens when something like this takes place is that the prophecy experts begin to, you know, crank out, uh, uh, to ramp up the rhetoric regarding the end times. And this was um, with the, on uh, Joel Rosenberg's uh, site, on his blog site, he's the one who posted this. and. He said a pastor friend of his who was helping him to set up his uh, 2010 Epi, uh, Epicenter Conference, which is named after one of his, his books, uh, sent him an urgent text message with this headline from is Israel National News. Rabbis, flotilla clash similar to Gog and Magog prophecy. And then Rosenberg writes, as you might expect, it caught my attention right away. Well, of course it did because this is, there's a whole industry based upon um, current events, especially for anything that takes place in Israel, is they, are all, they can always find some passage in the Old Testament uh, that they say is a fulfillment of Bible prophecy today. Uh, they never remind their, their listeners and their readers that every generation took the same uh, series of Bible prophecies and claimed that the fulfillment was taking place in their day. Uh, this is especially true of Ezekiel 38 and 39. There's a whole history of interpretation on Ezekiel 38 and 39. Uh, you would be amazed at some of the, the, the prophecies re, you know, re, related to this. Well, maybe you wouldn't be amazed. I'm not amazed anymore on all of this. Um, if you look at Ezekiel 38 and 39, you will see that what, what took place and what is taking place in Israel today has nothing whatsoever uh, uh, to do with this particular prophecy. Uh, this is a prophecy that has already been fulfilled. Uh, this is a prophecy that is, uh, has, was fought with ancient weapons. Um, the, the pe they're on horseback. I, don't, I didn't see anybody on horseback uh, on this flotilla. They were, they were on, a, on, a, on a ship, on a, on a boat of some sort. Uh, there are no bows and arrows, uh, the, um, no chariots. I mean, that's one of the things, that the, the riders, uh, the, the, uh, this war takes place uh, with, with, with chariots. Uh, no, no, you know, n nothing to relate to this particular prophecy. Um, this, of, co of course, this particular prophecy is uh, uh, you know, fought with, with uh, weapons that are ancient. Uh, you, then, then you look here, not only what they were after, uh, verse 13 of Ezekiel 38, uh, it says, Sheba and Dedan and the merchants of Tarshish with all of its villages will say to you, uh, have you come to capture spoil? Have you assembled your company to seize plunder, to carry away silver and gold, to take away cattle and goods, to capture great spoil? Uh, there was none of this related to this. In fact, the, 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 the ship was actually bringing in food. Uh, they weren't in there to capture anything. Uh, and if you look at, if you look at the, the, the book of, uh, of, of Ezra, uh, uh, Ezra and Nehemiah, you will see that this was, this was stuff that took place during that particular time. In, in the book of, of um, Ezra chapter 1, you will see that after coming back from, from the exile, they brought back with them a number of commodities. Verse 4 of Ezra chapter 1, And every survivor of whatever place he may live, 
let the men of that place support, uh, support him with silver and gold, with goods and cattle, together with a free will offering for the house of God which is in Jerusalem. And so what did, the, what did the exiles bring back from captivity? Gold, silver, cattle, and goods. You get to Ezekiel chapter 38. What is it that uh, the, 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 they come in for the spoil? Uh, gold, silver, cattle, and goods. So this particular passage is telling us that this took place sometime after the exile as the Jews were returning to Israel to do what? to rebuild their city, to rebuild their temple. The very things that the dispensationalists today say must take place again. And yet we see this already in the Old Testament. Coming back from, from, uh, from captivity, from all the nations, back to Israel, to establishing their national identity, to rebuild their temple, uh, to uh, 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 reestablish the sacrificial system, the, the priesthood and so forth. Read the book, especially read the book of Ezra to see this. You also read the book of, of, of Nehemiah to see this. This is exactly what happened. Uh, this isn't talking about what's taking place today. This was something that took place back then. And one of the things that goes on here um, uh, that Joel Rosenberg says is, is, uh, is, an intri is some intriguing new article on the Jerusalem Post website uh, that also feels ripped from the Ezekiel prophecies. And what is that? Israel set to become gas exporter. I don't see anything in here, Ezekiel 38 and 39, that says anything about it because Israel found gas off the, off the coast. Why wouldn't they have found gas off, uh, natural gas off the coast? The whole area is filled with, with oil and gas. This was something that Hal Lindsey kept saying. He says this is, this is a fulfillment of Bible prophecy because what they're going to want to come down there into Israel and do is, is, is to take oil because Israel's going to discover oil. There's nothing in Ezekiel 38 and 39 says anything about Israel becoming, uh, uh, discovering oil. It's, it's gold, silver, cattle, and goods, the very thing that they brought back from the captivity. And what's funny, when you read Hal Lindsey's interpretation of, of all of this, the oil thing, all the passages that he, he refers to either refers to water found in the ground or olive oil. Uh, again, I, this is just amazing to me that, that somebody of, of Joel Rosenberg's in, intelligence uh, can, can fall for all this. But they, they have to develop an end time scenario that fits with their, the, the, the books that they publish. Uh, this is an entire prophetic industry. It's an pro entire prophetic industry uh, that has a sad history of fulfillment. Uh, the, 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 the end time bad guy in here considered by the dispensations, of course, is Russia, uh, because the Hebrew word Rosh is used, and because Rosh sounds like, like Russia, uh, this has got to be the antagonist in all of this. Uh, and of course, the Hebrew word Rosh does not mean Russia. He, the Hebrew word Rosh actually means um, head or chief. And so you might ask, well, when was this fulfilled? I believe the fulfillment of this took place in the events of, of um, in, in the, found in the book of Esther. Uh, what do you find? You find? You find Haman wanted to destroy all the Jews throughout, th throughout the Persian Empire. Uh, he attempts to do so and he fails and he ends up getting defeated. Uh, that makes much, much more sense than saying that this is a, a modern day battle. Uh, the, the, this is especially true when you've got uh, uh, some, uh, a group of people saying that they must interpret the Bible literally. Uh, and who is this, this chief prince uh, that Ezekiel talks about. And that is the better translation of, of, of Ezekiel. And it's interesting that, that Haman, you read Esther chapter 3 verse 1, it says, after these events King Ahasuerus promoted Haman, the son of uh, Hamadatha, the uh, Agagite, that sounds very much like a, a Gogite, and advanced him and established his authority over all the princes who were with him. He, in fact, was the chief prince. The Persian armies that were, were supposedly uh, being uh, formulated by Haman, attempted to destroy all of the Jews. Uh, you will find also in Ezekiel about unwalled cities. You will find the same thing in, in the same Hebrew word found in the book of, of Esther about unwalled cities. This is a prophecy that has already been fulfilled. Uh, Joel Rosenberg really needs to pay attention to his so-called literal interpretation and get off uh, this, this end time scenario, which I believe will put Israel even in more danger because it becomes a prophetic inevitability that Israel must be attacked.
Is modern day Israel a fulfillment of Bible prophecy? Join Gary DeMar and Jim Fletcher for this Bible prophecy debate June 19th at Midway Presbyterian Church. Registration is free to the public. For more information and to register, visit AmericanVision.org slash events. That's AmericanVision.org slash events.